Well, after getting those blades all sharpened up, I came out and dug out a yellow cedar log and stuck there on the mill. And then I have spent the day working on the mill. I had to go through and clean it up a little bit and uh, grease it up. I haven't greased it for a while. I should have done that when I got finished with it the last time, but I didn't do it. And my grease gun messed up and I had to work on it. And it seems like it's always something. But anyway, I got the mill all started up, warmed up and running, looped up. It's ready to go. I ran it up and down the track a couple of times here to get it loosened up and to make sure that everything clears that log this time. That last log that I did, of course, was quite a bit bigger than this one, but I wound up running uh, blade guides into the log and jamming it up and ruined a couple blades. So anyway, I run this one up and down there a few times and made sure it was all clear. So I got one of my freshly sharpened blades put on there. This is one of the last three blades that I did and it had a pretty good burr on the back of it there. The back edge of it was rolled over where I'd probably pushed it too far, ran it too long, and it ran in against the guide roller there and, and kind of mushroomed over the back edge of it. So I got it on there and tightened it up and then uh, just got the, the uh, mill running real slow and got my four and a half inch angle grinder with a grinding blade on it and went over both sides of the back edge of the blade and got that mushroomed edge taken off of there. Leave that on there, that kind of pulls the sawdust through and can deflect the blade. So anyway, that's all set up and it's all warmed up and ready to go. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make that first cut, cut the slab off there. I probably won't do much more than that because it's gonna be dark here pretty soon. But. slabbed got a nice slab off of it and that can be made into firewood we actually use those to make retaining walls or to make boxes in gardens and stuff like that a lot of my wife's flower beds are made out of those and then I got a nice flitch off of there and that flitch can be cut into boards I can run that through the radial arm saw or I can even use the skill saw on that trim those up into board that's a 16 foot long log so it's a 16 foot long flitch so even if I cut it into two eight foot sections uh, the one will make it probably a 12 inch wide board and the other one will make a 10 inch wide board on this end or six inch wide board or something like that make it to to fit whatever we need well now I get to roll that log over 90 degrees and I'll put that flat face against my dogs there on the side. Put flat against that which will make that next cut 90 degrees to that. So anyway I've got to roll that over. And these logs are getting to be too big for me to handle uh, by hand anymore with a PV. 
I can still roll them and still turn them, but it just hurts too much for too long afterwards to to do that anymore. So I guess I'll get the Bobcat set up with the log grapple on it and uh, come and get a hold of that and turn it over and get it set up for the other cut. We got that log rolled over, so we've got the slabbed off side of it vertical there, doing 90 degrees to the table in the blade. I'll go ahead and make another cut there and take another slab off there and that log is the diameter on that is so tall that I'm gonna have to just make the cut there at the full height of the mill the 24 inches and uh, pull that slab off there and I may be able to put that slab down on the table again when we're done and take a border or so off of it because it's gonna be pretty pretty thick I right, got a slab off of there and then a one inch, I guess it's still a flitch, it's part of it's got an edge on it on one edge but it's got weighing on, bo on both edges for most of it so, but it's a nice wide plank there, a one inch board, it can make some nice boards. And we'll roll the log over again, get it down on the flat face there and take a slab off this other side and then that'll be pretty much squared up and then we can start whittling it down into timbers and planks or whatever we need. Well, we got three sides of that flattened off now. Ordinarily on these uh, logs, I make an adjustment for the taper on them so that the cut on them goes parallel with the grain so the grain doesn't run out on the wood. So sometimes I have to jack up the end of the log on one end so that it kind of split the difference between the difference in diameter between one end and the other, the big end and the small end. I'll take the difference between the big end and the small end and divide it in half and then raise the small end up that much so that I'm taking an equal amount off of each side. But this log the, didn't have a whole lot of taper on it but what it did have was it had some big knots in it on uh, the small end which raised it up and kind of made it unnecessary to jack the log up. So when I turned it over on this uh, third side here there wasn't a whole lot of run out on the taper. There wasn't a whole lot of taper on it. Well, I just took a real thin cut on it. Just took a real thin slab off of it. Looks like it may be a half an inch to an inch uh, thick in places. It left a little bit of wane on both sides. And then I dropped the mill down an inch and made another cut on it. So I cut three one inch boards off of this side. I can probably take one more one inch board off of that. I may do that, but I think I'm done for now with it for today. So totally, so far on there, I've got five one-inch flitches off of it that can be cut into one-inch boards. Well, I've got 18 and a half inches between those two flats on that, and I can roll that log over and take a slab off that third side, and then and that'll have me a cant, and then I can uh, rip that down into the widths that I need. And I'm going to make some 6 by 6s and some 4 by 6s and then some more 2 by 6s So everything's going to be a 6 inch dimension. So I can rip up some 6 inch cants, cut my finish timbers out of that. Well, I'm done for a while. We're leaving for a little while for a couple weeks. So I'm going to get the mill ready to, uh, to leave. I'm going to clean it up, put a little bit of fuel guard in there, gas guard in there and some fuel in the tank and wash everything off and get it all cleaned up and get ready to, to put it away for a while. Got the mill running again. It's been a couple weeks since I had it running since the last time I cut on it. We had to go down south uh, so my wife could see the eye doctor down there. We don't have one anywhere close so we got to go down to Seattle to uh, see the eye doctor she needs to see and, and we spent uh, some time and went on down see the grandkids didn't do much else it, it took a couple weeks just about well, I couldn't do anything over the weekend it was pouring down rain and when I worked on the mill the last bit I, I ran the bobcat to the point where it's just about out of oil in the hydraulic system 
well, it was pretty much out. I had to quit. We got that big leak in the hydraulic system, and I'm going to have to take the machine apart to find it and fix it. So anyway, we got some oil for it today and, and filled the tank up, and then I used the forks on here, the grapple on here, to pick up six-inch channel iron that I had that I cut up into lengths to extend out that framework that I made up there for the porch, for the front porch. So I got to get those cleaned up, the rust cleaned off of them and stuff so I can get them welded on there on that uh, porch framework. And then I use the grapple to turn this log over to get the last piece of wane up on it. So anyway, I've got the mill all set up and ready to start cutting to get this side squared up, get most of it down so most of the wane off of it. A little bit of wane won't hurt anything on some of those boards, but uh, I like to have them nice and pretty as I can get them. So got this thing all laid over now so it's got a flat side down and and two flat sides on it on each side so we'll get this cut and as usual I'm just gonna make a nice easy cut on the thing I'll take the slab off the top of it here and I'll only take it off so it's only about an inch or two deep and then I'll start to make it one inch thick uh, planks on there save as much of that wood as I can I'm not going to finish this log up because it's going to be dark here pretty soon. I think sunset's about 4.45 today. So we lose a lot of daylight, especially with this thick overcast that we have. So anyway, I'll get a few cuts made on here and then I've got to take some measurements and see what I need for the rest of it. Well, that didn't work out very well. For some reason, that blade just started diving when it started in the cut. Fortunately, I was standing there watching it and saw what happened and got it stopped before it uh, created too big of a disaster. But anyway, I loosened it up on there and backed it out, back the mill off of the blade. We'll get the blade out of there, and that blade must uh, need to be reset or something because it sure didn't cut very good. Oh, I'll give it a try with another blade. I put a new blade on that, or another blade on that saw, on that mill. Hey, hey, get back up here. Knock it off, Saki. I took a wedge, a falling wedge, and drove in the end of that log and opened that kerf up enough to get that blade out of there and uh, went to put that blade away. And I've got another blade on there now. That's the old blade, or that's the blade that I used on to make the first cuts on that log here a few days ago. I usually like to change those out. What I like to do is run those blades till I get done cutting all the wane, and then I'll change them out for a fresh blade. That one was cutting pretty good before, so I put it back on there. I did a lot of grinding on some of those blades to get the tooth profiles right on them. And, and then some of them I've also sharpened several times. So I guess I'm going to have to take down the sharpener and put up the tooth setter and set those teeth to get them to cut straight. Anyway, I only went in about a foot and a half or two foot on the end of that log, so it didn't hurt anything on it. I'll just go ahead and start do doing what I started to do there. Go ahead and take a slab off of that and then a few one-inch boards.